Welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in, because in this video we are going to take a close look at the new racing wheel that we can use for the Nintendo Switch. It is from the brand name called Game Zone. I personally never heard of it and that's also one of the reasons I just wanted to pick it up. I think the form factor of the device looks quite cool and I was thinking is this thing any good or is it absolutely like a completely e-waste. The Game Boy Zone Tracer is a 4-in-1 that can be connected with PC, PS3, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. But I just wanted to see if it's going to be working on the Switch. Let's get this show on the road and let's see what we're actually going to get inside the package itself. So there was one thing I need to point out that there is no Nintendo Switch support on the box itself. But there is and I've tested it out. The question remains of course what are we actually going to get with the overall quality. That is what I wanted to take a close look at first. The pedals, I must say they are completely made out of plastic or most parts, but they feel kind of heavy. Then I have the extraction manual, that's only in English and Polish. Okay, that is kind of interesting to be honest. So this is clearly marketed for a different market here in Europe. And of course the racing wheel itself. The reason I picked the product up is just I wanted to see what we're actually going to get with the overall quality. That is going to be ultimate plastic fantastic. Yeah, that is a fact. But how bad is it? Is it like the chemical plastic that smells really bad? First of all, the pedals. They feel quite heavy. That is a very good thing. But also the pedal construction is very strange. Not something you will see with these cheap wheels. And I can already tell you playing with them, it's very comfortable. It gives you like a completely different feel actually like using this gas pedal. And it's a very positive thing too. Okay, when you're looking at the racing wheel, this was the most intriguing part of it. Because the racing wheels comes even with a shifter at the very nice right position. The racing wheel has a 270 degree angle. It's quite interesting and it's a little bit bigger than the normal racing wheel. The spring doesn't have like a very big tension to it. So you can see when the wheel goes back to the zero position. It's made out of plastic and rubberized at the sides. Because this will give you some extra grip. Going to get some extra buttons on the racing wheel itself, that's convenient if you want acceleration and brake on there. Then we have all the navigation buttons and some extra buttons. Let's, by the way, let's, let's remove this piece of plastic. Okay, let's, re <sighs> let's remove it. Come on. Yep. No. <sighs> there we go. But the thing is, the middle part is not a normal button. This is actually the D-pad. So the construction of the tracer is a quite interesting thing, to be honest. Everything has been set to the center of the wheel. We do have shifters, but they are completely made of plastic. At very, very long travel with micro switches. The overall quality is okay. You can see there is some wiggle room on the racing wheel itself. Then we have the shifter, the shifter at the right side. I already mentioned it positioned very nicely and have two micro switches for up and down. So this is not like a full transmission gear. I have seen this design before and I personally really dig it. I think it's very cool and very convenient. At the back we're going to get the telephone connection and that connects the pedals and then we're going to get more like an Xbox lookalike cable. It's quite long. For assembling the steering wheel, there are only the suction hook options and there are a lot of them and they work pretty damn good. Let's try some games and let's see how is the compatibility with this particular racing wheel. But before we're going to do and um, play some games on the Switch, the first thing that we need to do is getting into the Pro Controller mode enabled. Going to the system settings, there we will find the controls all the way down, all the way down, there we go, controllers and sensors. There we need to select this option and go to the Pro Controller Wired Communication and set this one on on. If you've done this, then your controller or your racing wheel in this case will work just fine. And if it doesn't, it doesn't support it. But let's get into some Super Mario Kart. Everything seems to be working like the original license wheel. So just have some fun and let's see it actually works. WRC8, I have tried this with different wheels and there was always some, some weird problem with it. 
but there were a couple of things you can do with this racing wheel also with some other wheels sometimes but i really like it so let's check everything out the acceleration needs to be remapped but also the shifts up and down needs to be set to the right position there is unfortunate and dead zone so it makes this game quite difficult to the point or unplayable to play but let's take a close look at the programming option pressing the option to program what you can do is saying hey i want to map the a button that is acceleration to my left or right pedal The configuration of the shifter and the race wheel, I really like it. It's absolutely great for WRC8. But the unfortunate thing is that when you're going to try this game with a dead zone, it's freaking impossible to play. Simply because you need to react so fast on some of the corners that that is not possible with a dead zone like this. I try to race slowly, but you can see instantly I mess up. Echt really annoying. So where games like WRC8 is very difficult to drive with a dead zone because that game needs a fast reaction of the wheel. And a dead zone is just absolutely horrible. We do have a dead zone with this particular game, but because the game runs slowly and, and you don't need to react that fast, it makes it a little bit better to play a game like Wreckfest. But don't get me wrong, it's still quite difficult to, to the point that it's, come, it's going to be impossible sometimes. CTR wasn't a plug and play situation here, it was completely messed up, every single button wasn't configured correctly. But with the program button, let's program the pedal to one acceleration over there and the second one will be mapped to power up. And I can tell you, even with the dead zone, this game plays quite nice and it is a lot of fun to basically accelerate and using power ups on the pedal itself. You can also use a steering wheel of course. Sonic Racing is unfortunate, a game that is even more horrible than WRC08. The reason why, because this game depends on having also a fast reaction. And the dead zone feels even bigger than the previous games. And again, it's a lot of fun playing this game with a racing wheel, but you need to have a direct, basically, like connection or not the dead zone at all. So we can respond to certain parts of the game. Yeah, I can still play it on when we're having not too difficult track, but the overall experience is not great at all. The conclusion is the Tracer Roadster is a very cool piece of equipment, but unfortunately when you're looking at it, it's not perfect. It wasn't supported so far I know on the box or in the manual, but it seems to be working on Nintendo Switch fine. I do like this configuration with the wheel, the position and the shifter, especially when you're going to play in certain kind of games. If we don't have any dead zone, that would be, it would be making a very cool wheel because it also includes a vibration. Thank you all for watching, consider subscribing, hit that little bell and it would be great to see you in the next video.